What is up my Squirtleites? It is I, your king, welcoming you to what I hope to be the start of a brand new series. When a game's been on my mind, whether I've just completed or replayed it, I want to bring it to everyone's attention and go over exactly why I think a game is bad, good, or even great. Think of this as, well, a review series, where I'll even be scoring the game at the end on a scale out of 10. Of course, scores are super arbitrary, so take that with as many grains of salt as you like. But this isn't meant to be some grandiose surprise with a lot of buildup. I'll always title the video accordingly. Why I love, why I like, why I dislike, and why I hate. Whichever one applies will always be right there in the name. I should warn you though, firsthand, that spoilers will be somewhat prevalent in these videos, so if you genuinely care about every facet of the gameplay or story being fresh, I advise clicking off the video. Though I usually won't talk about major plot points or a game's ending without any additional forewarning. With that said, my first video for you guys today is called Why I Love Fury. You guys probably remember me covering this game last year, not long after it came out. Fury is a French developed game and the second console game by the indie studio The Game Bakers, who apparently made a game called Squid's Odyssey for the Wii U before this? Huh, never heard of it. Fury combines, no, seamlessly balances elements of hack and slash games a la Bayonetta with elements of many classic bullet hell titles, mixing and mashing them all together into one giant boss rush of a game. Well, I suppose giant isn't the right word. Fury isn't a terribly long game, but we'll get into that later. First off, this. This right here is why I love Fury. This game is difficult to say the very least. Even on normal difficulty, this game will give some of the most hardcore players a run for their money, especially in the later portions of the game. And I'll be straightforward with you guys. I don't much care for overly difficult games. I like challenge, sure, but I don't like the way challenge is handled in most cases. I don't like being severely punished because I hate feeling like my time is wasted, even if that time is spent learning how to do something better. Fury is an incredibly rare exception to that rule, and I'll tell you why. This game is fast. It's exciting. The adrenaline level is always set to max, because every moment you're not looking for an opening to attack with either your sword or your pistol, you're dodging enemy fire or trying to telegraph your opponent's attacks to time a parry move. Fury places you in control of some sort of warrior known as The Stranger, trapped in an elaborate prison guarded by 10 beings of varying degrees and skill sets. You have to defeat all of these guards to escape, and that's essentially it. We aren't explicitly told who we are or why we're here for some time, and I think that ambiguity helps carry the story along. The narrative in and of itself isn't extremely compelling or anything, but it provides just enough bread to make following that trail a little more rewarding as you go. However, what really carries the player through the game is the bosses themselves. You will learn to hate every last one of these guys and gals pretty quickly, and I mean that in the best way possible. They are antagonistic and sometimes a little chatty, but provide all the more reasons for you to want to bring them down and move on to the next one. What I also love is that Fury places you on a seemingly even playing field with every boss, if not at a massive disadvantage at times. Each boss has multiple phases, as little as three, but as many as seven depending on the fight. And with each phase, the boss can have one or even two health bars that you have to chip away at, learning how that phase works in the process as the difficulty slightly ramps up each time, usually culminating in a final phase where the boss is nothing but an invincible bullet hell you have to survive before being given the opening to deliver the final blow. Meanwhile, you, the player, are only given three health bars and always take a lot more damage from a hit than your opponent will. The catch, however, is that every phase you complete rewards you with an additional life, unless of course you're at the max of three. The same does not apply to your opponent. The phases will range from long range combat that makes use of the entire arena to short range combat where you're never more than a sword strike away from the boss, having to go toe to toe with them in a small confined circle with the boss at the center. Your means of attack are your sword and a pistol that can fire in any direction in rapid succession session, or charged up for one higher risk, higher reward shot that may stagger the opponent. And then there are the dodge and parry buttons. That's it. There's no slew of magic skills or special abilities. Every fight in the game is carried out with the same equipment, and that's what makes the design so darn brilliant. The complexity of Fury doesn't come from convoluted control schemes, RPG mechanics, and flashy combinations, but rather learning how your tools function with increasing understanding as you play to eventual and expected mastery by the game's end. For example, in earlier fights you can get by using your dodge pretty normally, most attacks being small projectiles that you can evade with ease. 
even with the knowledge in the back of your mind that you can dodge at a further distance by holding down the button, but preemptively having to charge your dodge before doing so. However, in later fights this becomes almost a necessity, with bosses sending large waves of projectiles that cover too much space for you to easily slip by. But the game doesn't ever bombard you with this from the start. It eases you into every mechanic, while also making every single boss unique. That isn't to say the difficulty itself is seamless, because at times you'll find yourself so adept with one mechanic that some later fights might be a breeze, as opposed to earlier fights that gave you a lot of trouble. There are indeed certain bosses that are very heavy on the bullet hell mechanics, while allowing for little to no sword combat and sometimes the opposite. If you find yourself a lot better at one than the other, you may struggle in those areas. But hey, that's okay. Learning how these bosses work, especially with each advancing phase, is a game of memorization and adaptation. While some would accuse the game of hitting you with trial and error, very rarely is it so difficult to adapt before you lost all your lives and are forced to start over. Fury is about overcoming the challenge, and I like that. I prefer it to games such as Dark Souls, where patience is your greatest ally. Even if I have to fight the same boss five times over in Fury, I never have to be patient. I can always go all out, and that's exciting to me. Even while being decidedly weaker than the bosses I'm up against, I still feel powerful. I can still pull off crazy parry moves and absolutely dismantle my opponents, but never for a second can I take the game for granted, or else I will be seriously punished. That is difficulty I can appreciate, and it all works because Fury isn't a terribly long experience either. Nothing overstays its welcome because if you were to hypothetically breeze through it, you could easily beat the game in a couple of hours. However, that's not very likely, and I know my first playthrough clocked in at around 7. Fury is insanely replayable as well, with a harder difficulty in time attack modes, plus an alternate ending to chomp away at once the game is over with the first time. You've also probably noticed how unique the art style is too, and that's because the art director on this game was Takashi Okazaki, the creator of Afro Samurai. I love the aesthetic of this game, despite how decidedly bizarre it can get at times. While yes, the game is in fact an indie product, and you sometimes see for yourself where corners were cut, with portions of character models often clipping through one another, especially hair, I never find it distracting. Never does it look awful. And the soundtrack for this game is phenomenal. All the composers did an excellent job of emulating the combination of excitement and dread this game so wants to exude, and I love it. Have a listen to just a few of those tracks. As for technical issues, I can't speak for the PC or Xbox One versions, but on PlayStation 4 I have only ever run into one noticeable frame drop from its very stable 60 frames per second, and it actually came during a cutscene rather than one of the fights themselves. I've heard reports of worse, so your mileage may vary, but I don't think I've ever heard anyone say it gets so bad that it affects the game negatively, especially now that Fury has undergone a few stabilization patches since launch. All in all, Fury is a fantastic game. While the plot isn't hugely important, it doesn't need to be. The game is rewarding, satisfying, punchy, fast-paced, and as incredibly difficult as it is incredibly fair and often forgiving. If you're looking for a challenge but need a lot of excitement to keep you engaged, look no further. I have very few problems with Fury. I often find myself going back to the game every few months just to give myself a fun refresher, and it's a trip every time. And to top it all off, the game only costs $20 at the time of this video going up. That's why my final score for this little indie darling is a 9 out of 10. Well, that's it for this video. Please tell me what you like and don't like about this idea of a series in the comments below. Fury is a relatively short and simple game, so this wasn't likely to be a long video anyway. So games I cover in the future will probably have a lot more worth talking about. With that said, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one.